In our last lesson, we discussed how Mary is the co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all grace. She fully cooperated by satisfaction and merit in the sacrifice of the cross, and she never ceases to intercede, obtain, and distribute all the graces that are constantly at her disposal from God. In other words, through her union with Christ, God uses her to dispense to us the grace that we need for salvation. She plays a leading role in the drama of our salvation. And realize that though she has a special role, she's basically setting the example for all of us. You and I are called to participate in the redemptive act of Christ on the cross. As I said before, I would have never said any of this as a Protestant. I would have thought it was heresy, worthy of death at the stake. My response would have been, isn't Christ's act on the cross all we ever needed? How can sinful humans help save a sinful human race? It's ludicrous. Remember, I had no belief that Mary was immaculately conceived without sin. But the bigger issue for me was that her role just wasn't needed. Well, of course it's not needed. God doesn't need us. Christ doesn't need us. But he loves us. He wants us to be a part of his divine family. That's why he made us in his image. He wants us to be like him, like the rest of the family. He wants us to participate as a member of the divine family. And being part of the family means helping our brothers and sisters. But in the divine family, this goes far beyond making sure your little brother isn't bullied or your little sister makes it to school safely. Because we are all literally joined together in the mystical body of Christ through the sacraments, we participate in every aspect of his life. Again, not because it's needed, but because that's what he wants. That's what he wills. He gives us a role in the redemption of the world. How? Through love. Love one another, even as I have loved you, he says in John 13, 34. Love is the key to salvation. Not any old love, but self-sacrificing, self-giving love. That's the love that is as strong as death, says the Song of Solomon. That's the love that covers a multitude of sins, says 1 Peter 4.8. When we give of ourselves to others like Christ, we're acting in and through Christ. We're helping them toward salvation. We're participating in the redemptive love of Jesus Christ. And if this is still a little foreign to you, realize that you're probably already doing it. You're already acting as part of the redemption process. For example, when someone comes to ask you to pray for them because they're struggling with something, do you ever turn them away? Oh no, I can't do that. Don't you know the Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus in 1 Timothy 2.5? Why don't you just go directly to him and you know, leave me out of this? Of course you don't do that. You say, yes, I'll pray for you. When we offer up prayers and penances for each other, we're doing nothing less than becoming an avenue of grace for us and for that other person. We're spreading the love of Jesus Christ. We're helping that person overcome difficulty and moving ourselves toward salvation at the same time. Because we're joined to Christ, we can literally act as part of that redemption process. And that's exactly what Mary does only in a far more perfect way. Her entire life is intimately involved in the redemption of the entire world. Yes, only Christ can strictly merit our salvation and transmit divine life to us. But Mary participates in a powerful and unique way because of her relationship with him.